Yes? Good. All right. So um, I talked about apps before. Now I'm going to talk uh, about a very different kind of product, which is everything that is not an app that we make, which is uh, all the different plasma environments and things. But before I get ahead of myself like I was about to, uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, for those of you who not, don't know me, this is my name on the first line. It's pronounced Alej. It's not Alex. It's not Alex, especially. And it's not, uh, I don't know, Albert. My name is Alej. <laughs> uh, that's my email. If you want to send me an email, I will always try to reply to you eventually, even if it's not on the same day. But I try to do that. This is my 15 Academy, so woo! And this means that I have been doing KDE stuff for quite a while. I've been doing uh, KDE stuff since then. Like, when I started joining academies, it wasn't by chance. And I am the KDV president right now, so I'm part of the KDV board as well. If you want to talk about the KDV things one of these days, uh, feel free to reach out and talk. If you uh, want to talk about it with a beer between us, it's always a little bit better. But it's not mandatory. Now, getting a little bit in topic, it's um, what is plasma? And actually, uh, I was saying that I was getting ahead of myself because I was already saying it's not an app. And actually, this is something that this is our current understanding of plasma. There's been uh, moments in, in history where um, well, plasma was a framework to create apps, which is not something we're doing anymore, and it's something we might do eventually in the future, but not right now. Um, so. What is it really? And actually, I'm saying it's not apps, but we do distribute a fair amount of applications within Plasma, like uh, system settings or discover, which they're clearly in the shape of an app. So um, when you go into the internet uh, discussions and look at the people talking about what everything is, it's always kind of fun that they say it's a desktop environment, which is something that it makes me like feel a little bit uneasy inside. It's definitely technically true, and you can say that, and I'm not going to haunt you in your, in your dreams or otherwise, but um, it has a bit of a problem. First, it talks about desktop, which, I mean, it made sense 20 years ago, 30 years ago, probably, uh, maybe even 10, but not anymore, and especially since we started doing Plasma Mobile and we started doing all of the others, the big screen, etc which is a little bit what I want to talk about today anyway. So uh, I'm going to suggest that we don't talk about Plasma in terms of, of desktops anymore, because what, what is the desktop? A desktop is, well, where you write the letters to your loved ones or whatever in the light of a gas scandal in a snowy night of 1893. <laughs> also, it's what Windows delivered in uh, 1995. But the vision has changed a lot, a lot. So if we remove the, the word desktop, then we get with an environment, which is sure, it's an environment, but that doesn't mean anything. And we would probably end up sp spending much more time defining what an environment is, even in the concept of Linux or software, than the word is good for, right? So um, I'm going to suggest let's not do that. I'm not going <laughs> to try to be negative during all of the presentation, don't worry. Then we could say, all right, so we have it on different uh, platforms, different form factors. We have it on a bunch of different kind of places, even in apps, right? So it's a bunch of frameworks to develop apps, right? But for starters, the framework definition is something uh, highly technical, and I don't think that it either uh, solves anything, right? Because when we are using a plasma-powered device, we are using a very specific set of features and of, of, uh, of components, right? And while they could fit into the definition of framework, if we stretch the definition of frameworks in a way, uh, we could do that, but let's not do that. So uh, well, right now, when talking about frameworks, I already delved into this. Well, maybe it's an experience, right? It's like what the these people have been trying to uh, make me feel when I'm using a computer, which is not entirely wrong, although not everything you feel in front of your computer is our fault, for better or worse. So I'm not going to go with that. So um, with the lack of a good one word that we can use, 
because I am not linguist or even an English native speaker, I'm gonna go with it's a UX of, for a number of devices designed by us. And us being KDE, and more specifically the people in KDE that are working on, on, on Plasma, which it goes, of course, and without needing to say, far beyond the actual developers who do the commits of these ifs and whiles, but like everybody who well, thinks about how we should be using, when they see a problem, they uh, poke us to, to address them, right? So, um, I've been talking about Plasma as, it was, as if it was a thing, but uh, now when we're talking about Plasma products, which is something that we can definitely enumerate, and then we should now be able to define that. So, uh, not to make the introduction of my talk all that much longer, um, let's go with, it's a UX for a form factor designed by us. We could add an addendum here saying, with a specific set of, of um, technical solutions that we collectively came up with, because if you had to use a different thing for everything, it would be uh, very easy, for, uh, very hard for us to uh, share any code and, well, all of that. So, um, I guess it does make sense. But in practice, we can maybe argue that it's an implementation detail that all of our uh, Plasma sessions are using the Plasma framework, although it's a, um, an implementation detail that is very important um, in that, like, we're gonna go through in this presentation, understanding how this technology works is gonna make it much easier for you to, uh, to be proficient at putting together these kind of products. Now, um, Let's see what we, where we are now before creating new ones. Uh, what we need to understand first is that we have uh, some already said. Um, because one of the big outcomes I that I want you to have from this presentation is I shouldn't be always creating new things, uh, being mindful about what we have and how to uh, improve it for my use case is something that always should be on the table and we should try, try to stri strive for. Now this is a uh, Plasma desktop, like uh, we've all known it for at least since Plasma 5, and it's not entirely different from maybe component by component from what we had in Plasma 1 or uh, KD 1 or 2, right? Um, we have menus, we have windows, we have applications that you can drag and maximize and all of that. This is how desktops were uh, invented uh, a number of years ago and uh, that's what we've rolled with uh, for a while, and it works because that's what we, uh, we learned. It doesn't mean that desktops need to be this way, right? Like, we could have done something else, but th this is what we did, and this is where we are, and that this is the technology that, that we are betting on, at least for this kind of devices. And now I am talking about desktop again, but it's even false, even in this very narrow context, right? Because, uh, well, I am pretty sure that 80% of our desktop User, uh, Plasma desktop users are on a laptop or on a different kind of device. Like nowadays, uh, laptops, you can <laughs> detach the screen, which would uh, make anyone from the first laptop users gasp at this person is crazy. Why are they breaking their laptop? But it, it works quite right. And actually, we can, for example, use this Plasma desktop both on a desktop device and on a, on a laptop. And there's been a lot of effort into making sure that this kind of device, uh, this product can be used on a, on a laptop, right? Like it has support for battery and power management. This is something that wouldn't entirely make sense on a, lap uh, a non-laptop device, but uh, it makes sense. So it's already our first example that this is something that we could, uh, like we could have, have different plasma for laptops or for detachables, but we haven't done that, or at least we haven't done that yet, because, um, well, we value our time. Now, uh, with Plasma 526, we see that it's part of the rele our, our release. This is something that had been going on. This is Plasma Big Screen. This is a Plasma experience designed to work on TVs and anything that, well, you are sitting a little bit far apart. It has, for example, something that they started working on, uh, Aditya mainly, he has a talk, so uh, he might give some insights on the topic, but he uh, started working on um, voice integration for, uh, for it, because for the use case it makes a lot of sense, right? So if you're thinking about uh, laptop 
does it make sense for you to talk to the laptop if you have it on your lap already or on the desk anyway? Um, probably not, right? Like you can already reach it with your hand, but maybe, well, or at least this is what they thought when they designed it. It does make sense to talk to your TV because it's a few metric meters away and well, you want to control it and to be, um, well, explanatory. Something that also they had to work on that we just never realized uh, it was super important is the, uh, what we call right now the plasma remote controllers component, which ma makes it possible for you uh, to use your TV remote on, on, on plasma big screen. And incidentally, also on the plasma desktop, because we use the same technologies, so there's, uh, well, feeding back and forth. And then there we also can use other kind of remote, like, I don't know, a gaming console remote, and yeah, some other stuff like that. And if you wanted to add something there, this is something we could always do. Now, I am talking about this as this is something that um, we needed a new product. But we could easily, if you wanted, make the argument that it wasn't needed. I have been connecting my plasma desktop to, to my TV to play. Uh, movies for the longest time, and then you would be quite right, right? Like, if you want to watch the last movie you definitely didn't download on your TV, a very w good way of doing that is to plug in your uh, laptop or your desktop on, into the TV and, and, and play it, and like, you don't need a whole new shell to be able to watch a movie full screen because we have a ton of software that already does that for, for desktops, and in fact, many of the applications that you're gonna use on the desktop are the same as here. Uh, you don't need it, but it's not convenient at all. You don't want to have a, a mouse and a keyboard connected to your TV just to be able to watch uh, things. And maybe actually if you're downloading uh, definitely illegal things, you want to do it in a, in a, in a, um, in a way to communicate that, that that makes sense in this kind of UX, right? Like if you're already integrating the, the remote controller from your TV, you want to be able to like be able to do your things from up and down and left and right. And if you and when you cannot, you want to integrate maybe these things with KD Connect, which is already doing these things. And the things that KD Connect will do with this kind of shell will already be uh, different from what you would be doing on the desktop. And I'm actually uh, mentioning specifically KD Connect because they already did some specific integration work uh, with uh, KD Connect for, so that, <clears throat> for example, you can send your voice into the phone and into the Mycroft uh, engine over there to uh, execute the commands because, well, you need a good microphone and something that you have on a phone often is a good microphone. Um, another uh, Plasma product that we've been working on over the last several, several years is uh, Plasma Mobile. Uh, it's again using 99% of the same of, uh, code as the rest. It's using the same kind of kernels. It's using uh, the same Qt. It's using the same KD frameworks. And it's using a lot of the same Plasma components. You did see Devonstock, I'm sure many of you, you, you saw that we're sharing the same components for notifications. We're sharing the, a lot of the same applications. But yet, if you put Plasma Desktop on a phone, which definitely you can do, um, it wouldn't be very nice, right? Like for example, you would have over here a little button that opens a menu that you can uh, scroll on. This would be fine, but I don't think anyone wants to do that. Um, so it's all a matter of uh, seeing, is it worth it what we get uh, to create a new UI, but also, um, well, how convenient and how better your product is gonna be when you adopt it. But for example, we can see that we never ended up putting together a f product for our tablets, which yes, it's not entirely true. We tried that. But <laughs> in the context of this talk, uh, we don't have today a Plasma for tablets. And that's fine because some tablets will be all right with Plasma Mobile, some pl tablets will be fine with Plasma Desktop, and that's all right. And if one day we say tablets definitely need these, like if I shake it, do something entirely different, we can do another one, right? Like, we can do it, and why? Because we have all of the technology to make it uh, easy uh, well, to be done. So, now, what I want to put you in the mindset right now is, uh, before starting a Plasma product, this means that you have a big long journey to take on. You need to be thinking about a ton of things. It's definitely doable, but you need to be very mindful about what you want to do. But then sometimes it's probably worth it and even advisable, right? 
So to do this uh, presentation, I'm gonna I'm gonna use as a as an example the um, well, this is the very first alpha super alpha squared of um, a, something we called plasma ink, which is uh, for a device called the Pine Note, which is the one that you can see framing our lovely black and white plasma, which is not uh, plasma for very old TVs, but actually one of these ink devices that, um, well, are one of the special things is that they are only black and white, but they have a ton of other specificities. So in this case, I think that it makes a lot of sense that we do at least some of the adaptations that we need uh, because, for example, if we show a lot of different shades of gray over here, it makes everything much harder to read. Um, and, for example, we are gonna have, uh, like, we need to make sure that there's no animation here. One of these, the, on the things about this kind of displays is that the refresh rate is not great. And <laughs> one thing we could do as Plasma is, we're used to 60 FPS, let's fix all of the ink in displays, which if we did, we would probably get rich right now. But <laughs> that's not what we decided. What we decided was let's try to not have animations, right? This is the kind of thing we want, we're thinking about, like let's make sure that um, when we have a new kind of device with different restrictions, uh, we can adapt to them and, and be the kind of wall desktop we want to do. For example, here we haven't really changed yet the setup of the Plasma desktop uh, because, well, first it's a super alpha, so we didn't really have the time yet. It could probably make sense. We have uh, several mockups, for example, to make the menu full screen because you don't want to be scrolling on this kind of, of uh, UIs, like I said, because very slow refresh rate, so let's not do that. Um, all these kind of things need to be thought of. And for example, here you can see Dolphin. Is Dolphin the application that we want to have there? Maybe not, probably not even, but well, we need people to think about it. And I'm talking about this as a super alpha thing, and I am hoping that all of, all of you are starting to think what is gonna be your role on this uh, product, because uh, if we want to make it happen, uh, we need to work on it anyway. So, um, It's about this balance, right? It's about the balance between uh, making everything go through the same uh, solution, like maybe Plasma desktop everywhere or Plasma mobile everywhere, which I don't think it makes any sense, or um, making an entirely different shell for any device. Like, it doesn't even need to be any form factor, right? Like, we could decide that any HP device, um, laptops, they get a new shell with a uh, panel on top and whatever else, right? This could be done. Is it a good idea? I don't think so, especially if the devices are not entirely different, but it sure is something that we could be doing. And please don't start sending mail requests about uh, this kind of details. It's, um, well, uh, an example. Now, I'm gonna try to um, take a look right now at what does it take at the technical level to do this kind of integration for a device not because you have to start creating very different uh, devices right now, but to see what kind of things we did for this plasma ink thing, which could be uh, looking um, maybe more complex than it is or less. And then uh, we will look a little bit later on our next section about the non-technical aspect of, of this endeavor. Um, effectively, and as it is set up right now, which actually doesn't need, even need to be the end game on the subject, is that it's an executable. So, uh, like, you know, when you start a session uh, on your device, I guess, um, something is executed by SDM or a uh, different component, a uh, different but similar component. Uh, we execute a com uh, an ex um, executable. Um, what we do here is uh, it's basically a script that just does this. Um, here I simplified it from the one that we have, the one we have on Plasma Ink and Plasma Mobile and Plasma Big Screen is maybe like 20 lines, but it was too boring and it wasn't proving a point. I am here to prove a point. So what we're doing basically is uh, just setting the shell that we want to load and uh, starting a Plasma Whalen uh, session. And by the way, before you ask or something, I am only considering doing any other form factors using Whalen. I don't think that it makes sense using X11 anymore for anything that isn't a desktop or a laptop, but uh, I wouldn't go much farther. Because uh, specific, especially in this kind of cases, um, well, uh, Wayland gives us a lot of, of 
like a very tight grip on the kind of relationship we have with the, with the hardware, whereas it's something that we need to delegate to X11 and Xorg in this case for X11, which uh, it's very, very hard for us, especially if uh, none of us are Xorg developers, which is something that we've all suffered over the last couple of decades. Now, um, like I said, it effectively is one of the files like you will see on your user share Wayland sessions. You can see others over there uh, for, from Plasma. You will see others from non-Plasma. It's also what you will get, I don't know, from Sway and Gnome and et cetera. Uh, this executes an executable, which is what we looked at before. Now, you saw we were um, setting an environment variable that loaded uh, what we call um, a look and feel, which uh, basically, is defined by these four lines. Again, I did clean up this uh, because it's a little bit more complex than that, but the rest is not all that interesting. But what we're saying is we're called Plasma Inc., we're a Plasma Shell, and we're loading um, a Plasma Inc. So it will get all of the defaults and everything from packages called Plasma Inc., and if they're not present, it will use the Plasma Desktop. So that's how we could do, like, making something specific like the color stuff that I showed you and all, but otherwise it looks like a Plasma desktop. But th then we can start um, like modifying things little by little until we are at the point where we want. So this allows us to share a ton of code with uh, our app streaming in this case, which would be a uh, Plasma desktop. There's a lot of things that we're gonna need that can just be implemented in Plasma desktop and that's fine and everybody has them. And there's some things like the colors we don't want to make everybody use black and white only because we want to be able to support in this place, right? So for those cases, we can make it specific and that's fine. So that you see what uh, in practice it looks like because it could look a bit or sound a little bit ethereal. Um, these are the defaults file, which basically they define, like here we're talking about, this is uh, the Plasma Shell RC file and then we have the group and then this value. This is gonna be uh, written into our .config file, so when, in this case, when Plasma Shell loads this configuration package, it's gonna find this for the, for the shell package key. Right, so uh, as soon as you're using, uh, or as soon as you're developing Plasma Shell, it's already transparent to you. You don't need to have a ton of ifs to see if I am Plasma Inc. or if I'm anything else. It ju you're just fed the, the correct thing. Something that we've uh, developed uh, to make it easy for you to create this kind of, of, of shells is uh, Plasma Nano. Plasma Nano, if you saw uh, Nate's presentation, it was uh, started, I think, to make sure that uh, the Microsoft device and Plasma Mobile could uh, be sharing uh, work. Um, and it's, it's proved uh, useful on, on other cases, uh, cases. Also, big screen now, of course, is, is using it. Um, but there's other cases that you might want to use it. Uh, we're not using it in ink, for example, just yet, because, because we're defaulting on, on Plasma Desktop, which is more useful that way, but it's something we could do if, if it came to it. Like I said, it's a matter of whatever saves the, the most cold code wins. Now, we've been talking about the technical level, and note that we didn't talk about any C++ or any QML. I mean, definitely there is some of that, but so far, we've been talking about mostly desktop files and configuration. So what you want is just to make, to put your system into a, into a state that looks for the defaults and the components they want to use into a different place. And in case of many of the QML components, like, I don't know, the lock screen, the lock screen is different on, on Plasma Mobile and on Plasma Desktop. Uh, what we do is we have in a different place, the same files more or less, and then when you are on that shell, you're gonna find the right one regardless. Now, I was talking about, um, about how not to be creating like uh, maniacs, uh, a, new, a new Plasma product for everything, but that it needs to make sense, right? So what we need to be thinking about is a user story. I am not the most qualified person to be talking about user stories, but you can definitely look it up on the interwebs. But a little, a little bit, the idea is like, what do you want your people, your, your users to be experiencing over their process, especially when they get this new device, this device that they might be familiar with or not. Like for example, something that is 
very clear on both Plasma Mobile and Plasma Desktop is that it's something, even Plasma Victory, it's something that like you assume that there are some concepts that your users are familiar with uh, from the get-go. But this is not something necessary, right? Like you could be creating an entirely different kind of user experience um, that is new because it's a different kind of device or whatever, right? So there is something to be thinking about. Also, something to think about is hardware vendor. I think that is, it's very important that we don't think about creating products for hypothetical uh, vendors. Something we've been doing and, uh, in Linux, and it's definitely been a problem, and whoever doesn't say it's a problem is lying, is that we haven't had like very ad hoc uh, hardware vendors. This is something we've been fixing so over, over the recent years, but we are definitely still having problems, right? But you need to have a product, uh, like something in mind that you can touch, that you can test with, that you can have your people test with and, and try it. And it, w it needs to work for these things, right? Then you can find another one and another one. Also, it doesn't need to be like you creating the hardware, right? It can be another company. It doesn't even need to be. When we started Plasma Mobile, we, there weren't any easily available uh, hardware. So uh, actually, Bushan started, I think, working on putting it on Nexus 5X. And Nexus 5 before, actually it was probably before Bushan. Anyway, KD developers started working on, on making sure that that device was available because it, we needed something that we could just rely on and make sure that it worked and uh, ask our friends to test it over there. You need to have something that you can buy and you can, need to, you, you can put the, the hardware on. And what I said, it doesn't need to be you shipping it. You don't want to end up in the position where you cannot, well, tell your friends to buy this thing and it's gonna run our experience, right? If you need to tell people, you buy this thing, you wipe, wipe the, um, the hard drive with all of your guarantee and then you put this other software that we create, which is like Ace. I mean, it's fine, we've been doing it for a while and we've been suffering it as well, so let's be aware of it. Uh, now, like I was talking before about apps uh, on the Gold Talk, we need to be doing far more beyond the technical work. Even if not, it's not that technical work, the, what I was talking over here. We need to be doing the promotion, the explanation of the product, we, and actually having a hardware platform, for example, helps a lot over there. You need to um, be, be able to explain to humanity what your product is about and why humanity needs your work. Because if nobody needs your work, uh, maybe, and don't quote me, maybe you're wasting your time, but well, hopefully not. Then uh, something we've been doing uh, in the past is, and we're doing more and more of that is, uh, well, thinking about how our binaries reads the, the hardware. Like I was saying before, we weren't thinking before about the hardware because we were not even thinking about the step that took our software into hardware, which is, has been distros. But especially when you're starting, like I said, you need to have a hardware um, to, to run it on, and to have a hardware to run it on, you're gonna need binaries, and you need to have a plan for those. This can be one of the distros that we have, and by saying distros here, I am already being a bit biased, maybe. Maybe not. Um, but you need to have a plan for that anyways. For example, with uh, the KD Slim book, what we've been doing is KD Neon. With uh, the Pine Phone, what we've been doing is uh, working with Manjaro. But in any case, uh, we need to have a, like, a, at least a path to adoption. Then uh, it should never be just you working on that platform. You, you're gonna, gonna have, um, what you're gonna want people to be collaborating. They can collaborate straight out into your shell by, um, well, by making merge requests, but that only goes as far, right? Um, we need to have a plan for people to be able to put together their ideas. Um, again, what we've been doing uh, in the past has been to rely on the distros a lot to be doing this kind of work, but uh, I think that we're seeing that using other means that are more direct to us also helps us. Like, we can have a very direct relationship with a distro and say, now we're working on, on the shell on these topics, right? But we cannot have every distro care about every different app and every different framework that you know, there is around. But if we have means for, uh, well, third parties to bridge your platform, that works. And like David was saying, this is how uh, we've been doing, uh, like how Valve decided to do it was through FlatHub specifically. Um, 
So yeah, this is something you can and should be thinking about. Now, something that I, I thought that it could make sense to go through some topics that are, well, it's uh, tempting to say, all right, so you have this plasma desktop thing, I'm gonna just, instead of making something on top and be sharing all of this stuff, which is definitely more work, uh, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna just do this couple of patches and it's gonna be all right, and then this, what we could just call a micro fork, right? Like, yes. Alesh said in Academy 2022 that any distro that is patching Kitty is already forking it. Uh, well then, yeah, it's probably a fork. Uh, because, and actually this is the biggest problem is that um, as soon as you start changing small things and well, you get comfortable with it and actually you start working with it and on it, you will see that you start doing more of that. And this is a problem. This is a problem for you as a downstream because you're changing things that potentially you don't uh, quite understand. And it's a problem for us because all of the work that you're putting on, it doesn't reach us. So the other side of the coin is gonna be just work with upstream. Like we, like we said, it's important that you establish a relationship with the different uh, people who are gonna get your product into the user's hands. So. If that's not you, make sure that uh, these people who are doing that uh, talk to you, explain to you what their problems are and that you have solutions for them because otherwise they're gonna come up with their solutions and yeah, they're gonna fork and we don't wanna fork, right? See the last slide. Before we end up in a, in a weird loop over here, just gonna remind you that we are all here developing Plasma because um, well, we want to improve it and there's room for improvement. So if you see something that is not working and it doesn't need to be a bug, a crash or something super obvious, you think that it should work entirely different, don't assume that somebody decided something needs to be in a specific way and uh, it cannot be changed. Everything can be changed and everything should be discussed. And I am sure that if you find your uh, plasma designer, de developer, whatever that you might need and have a thoughtful conversation, you, you can do that, uh, you can make it happen. And by the way, in KDE we have more tools than we ever did, like something that gave us the pandemic besides something, a couple of years uh, of non talking to each other in person has been setting up something called meet.k.org which is a magnificent uh, tool for meeting each other. You don't even need to travel, you don't need to go anywhere. You can just say, okay, let's have a talk. You have a talk with each other. You see the different points of view. And I am definitely sure that this is better than a weird conversation on chat that very quickly escalates and, well, potentially doesn't lead anywhere. And when talking about devices, something I want to say is be careful with ARM. ARM is very powerful and it has allowed us to do things with Pine, for example, that we had never seen with other partners. But you need to have a very committed partner to do that. Like, any adoption that I've seen on uh, of a device on, on ARM has needed very specific images for any kind of device, which this is something that it's fine if it's a very important device for us, but if we're on the like prospect moment of our product when we haven't decided just yet to adopt it, it can be very draining to see a percentage of your team instead of being able to worry about the user experience and what they're seeing when you're, they're using your product that they need to be fighting with the hardware to make sure that it's booted. Uh, this is not something that we can afford, I think. So I would recommend uh, working with more uh, standard platforms that way. But in practice, I think that it's uh, a good opportunity for us to like be putting forward some experiences that um, among a very uh, boring set of components you end up putting a very special experience that it's created by us, that it's making our users' uh, life more. Oh, it didn't jump slides. Oh, 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 oh. Well, it doesn't like my slides. Well, it has a nice landscape of Barcelona. You're missing it. Um, that you can have your very speci special experience with um, with what you're doing because there is definitely room for improvement. Uh, we have a huge industry and we have probably the biggest competitors in, in our realm. We are competing against Google, we're competing against Microsoft, we're competing against Apple, and that's probably one of the most uphill battles, but I, we definitely have a chance and we have a chance as, as soon as we understand what other people, uh, our users, 
um, as soon as we understand our users and as soon as we can cater to them. So, um, well, now we have a slide that says uh, question mark because uh, it's time for questions. So uh, we can probably take some questions now or over the week. Thank you very much, Alesh, for the talk. Are there any questions in the room for the speaker? I just checked the online ones, but there weren't any at this Do point. We. Yeah, so maybe someone in the room? Yep. Hi, Alex. Yes, uh, just a quick question. Like, you showed that you will use desktop uh, UI on e-ink screen, right? Well, I said that on the super alpha we have right now, that's what we have. Okay, so uh, would it be better to use the Plasma UI screen for such use cases, or you think desktop, use ca desktop UI is much better? You mean the mobile UI? Yes. Well, the mobile UI relies on you like doing things like scrolling, right? And I don't, I'm not sure that this is the best solution for a screen that has very low refresh rate, but I don't know, like, it's very easy to change, like you said, so you can, you can try, change, and, and see. I, I think that what we probably want to do is, like, a bespoke um, shell like we did for Plasma Mobile, right? But we, it only makes sense to do that once we know exactly what the uh, user experience of that device is gonna be. And I don't think uh, it's clear to me or to the community at large, but, um, I mean, it's definitely open to uh, discussion. And actually, we do have a buff about Plasma Inc. I'm pretty sure it's on Monday, maybe Tuesday. So yeah, go to your buffs, make things happen. L last second question on the chat here. Um, you mentioned ARM. Any thoughts about Risk V? So my complaint about ARM isn't the instructions in the executables, right? I, uh, I wanted to say I couldn't care less. Uh, it's, it's uh, I could care, but the important thing is how hard it is to set up an, an image. ARM could still figure themselves out, right? Like, uh, as soon as I can create uh, an image for a Pine phone and use it on, uh, I don't know, an iPhone, then this problem will be solved and we can decide about other things, but until that's the, the case, I am still gonna feel like it's a big, big effort to adopt ARM as a platform, unless we have a big infrastructure, like I said, with uh, the Pine case. Anyone else with questions? Thank you very much, Alesh. <laughs>